Hello friends, good day. Welcome to our YouTube channel GKR Soft. In this video, we are going to discuss about sender receiver interface or sender receiver communication. If you want to understand more detailed about AutoSAR, you can watch my complete playlist. Before start to discuss about sender receiver interface, first we can discuss about AutoSAR communication. So software components will be placed in the application layer. And if you want to make a communication between two software components, then you need a ports. Basically, AutoSAR software components provide well-defined connection points called ports. There are three types of AutoSAR ports, P port, R port and PR port. If you want to understand more about AutoSAR ports, I have mentioned my previous video in the description. You can watch it. Sender receiver communication. Whenever you want to exchange data between software components, you will use a sender receiver interface. So meaning you need a ports and ports will be associated with interfaces. We have many and multiple interfaces in AutoSAR. But in this video, specifically we are going to discuss about sender receiver interface. A sender receiver interface is used for communicating data between ports. It's also a model for asynchronous distribution of information where a sender distribute information to one or several receivers. The sender just provides the information and the receiver decides automatically when and how to use the information. If you will see this picture, we have a sender software component. This is sending the information to the multiple receiver software component. The sender software component will have a P ports. The receiver software components will have a R ports. To make a communication by using sender receiver interface, we have a two possibilities. One is queued, another one is non-queued. If it is a non-queued communication, then in that case, newly received value overrides the previous value of the data item. If a value is sent multiple times before it is received, then the receiver can only access the last transmitted value in the non-queued sender receiver communication. If it is a queued sender receiver communication, sender receiver interface queues arrivals of the data item on the receiver side and this will processed using a first in first out queue with a specified length. You can see this picture. This is a non-queued sender receiver communication. There will be none of the queue will be maintained here. So whenever the latest data will be available, that will be received by the receiver. But that means here there will be no, no more queue will be created. But in the queued communication, we will have a queue. But this will be configured specifically during your configuration. So based on your queue length, queue will be formed here. So this is the way queued communication will get processed. How we can make or how we can say like during our configuration of sender receiver interface, whether it is queued or it is non-queued. The mainly this will be decided by using the term called software implementation policy, SWO IMPL policy, software implementation policy. If it is configured as a queued, then automatically this will make us a queued sender receiver communication. And inside the sender receiver interface, we can have a multiple data elements. Each data elements has a multiple variable. That means each data elements has a variable data prototype. This is generally called as a VDP. This is normally seen as a normal variable how you are declaring in your C programming language. For an example, here I have declared the variable called data with the data type of unsigned integer 8. If you want to understand more about AutoSAR data type, you can watch data type video. That's also available in our playlist. So the software implementation policy will be deciding whether you are going to make a queued sender receiver communication or non-queued sender receiver communication. So it's an example for how we can design the P and R port when you are choosing a queued sender receiver communication. For an example, P port, it has the provided com spec. Here we will mention the VDP, which will be equally configured in this inside the sender receiver interface. And in the R port side, we'll have a required com spec and we should define a Q length. Based on the Q length, Q will be created. So, here I have mentioned the Q length as 3. Then equally RT will handle the 3 data buffer. So, here we have to mention sender receiver interface as well. This is the way P and R port will be designed. But in the sender receiver interface, inside the sender receiver interface, whether it is a queued sender receiver or non-queued sender receiver communication will be decided by using software implementation policy. Now we can see the non-queued sender receiver communication. So here the software implementation policy simply omitted. Then automatically this will behave as a non-queued sender receiver communication. Other than that, everything is same. 
in the configuration between queued and non queued for sender receiver inside only the sender receiver interface. Now we can see how we can design the P and R port in the case of non queued sender receiver communication. See in the P port here nothing Q length will be not be mentioned and at the same time there will be no provided comm spec. At the same time in the R port here we have a non queued receiver comm spec and we can mention the VDP variable data prototype and here none of the Q length will be configured. And based on your requirement and configuration, if you want to set a init value, you can configure it here. This is a sample to say about how we can do the P and R port non queued sender receiver communication. Sending a data. So now we have seen that how we can make a communication. Now we are going to discuss about how we can send a data by using sender receiver interface. To send a data via ports, we have a two options. For an example, mainly. If you want to share or you want to use a sender receiver interface, that means you should at least one runnable entity that sends data over the interface. So if you want to understand more about runnable entity, you can watch the video in, I have mentioned all the video links in the description. You can watch it and you can watch from the complete playlist as well. You can find all the videos in our playlist as well. So every, if you want to send a data, then if you're choosing a sender receiver interface, then one run at least one runnable entity should be configured. So the runnable can send data in two ways. One is explicitly, another one is implicitly. Under explicitly, we have a two option. One is non-queued, another one is queued. But implicitly always as that means implicit communication always prefer the non-queued communication. Now we can see more detail about how the implicit and explicit works. For an example, if you'll see the example here, implicit communication. So when you want to make implicit communication, the local buffer will be used. For an example, this is a P port. It's writing in data with the IPA called RT, right? So here I have mentioned the simple diagram. It will maintain the local buffer and the local buffer data will be moved to the common buffer once the runnable entity terminates. That word you have to note it. In the implicit communication, whenever the term uh, runnable entity terminates or before starts, then we can properly read the data from the common buffer. But during the process, you will not get the latest data. So the meaning, the implicit communication, you can consider in a way, the RT generates an implicit API call that will be optimized to a macro. The send data item must not be queued. That is the only thing. But in the implicit communication, here we will use the local buffer to exchange the data. But one thing you have to keep in your mind, in especially in the case of implicit communication, that's mainly whenever you want to read a data via common buffer, then you can read only after the runnable entity terminates. So data written by a runnable entity are available to other runnable entity after runnable termination in the case of implicit communication. So several read access always delivers the same data value during the runnable execution because during a read time always you will read the data from a common buffer so the implicit api uses locally cached copy of data to preserve consistency over a calling runnable entity invocation so data is read into a global cache before the runnable entity starts executing and is read from the global cache after the runnable entity terminates data writes are done once no matter how many times it's written. So this is mainly deal in the implicit communication. Now we can discuss about explicit communication. In the explicit communication, you generally called as a direct access. So direct access means it will have a common global buffer where you can read it, the data, how many times you want. That's especially in the explicit communication, meaning direct access to variables. And several read access may deliver different data values during runnable execution. There we have a two option. One is queued communication. Another one is non-queued communication. That is the difference between implicit and explicit communication. This is one of the most important interview question who all are trying to get a job in automotive industry. Generally, they used to ask, what is the difference between implicit and explicit? How you can design a runnable? That's also one of the question. That's we can see it in the upcoming, that means in the upcoming slides. Explicit communication. So first we are going to start from explicit communication. Explicit communication generates an explicit API call that may be optimized to a macro. The send data item may be either queued or unqueued by the receiver. But everything will be decided by the receiver. For sender, it doesn't matter 
how the runnable entity is triggered so any event can be used to activate the runnable entity if you want to understand more detail about runnable entity events how it will be mapped then you can watch the video in our playlist so if you will see the example here this is a way we can configure runnable entity so whenever you want to send the data here i have used the data send points so in the data send points we have variable access then we have to mention about the port prototype reference which port you want to mention all this information runnable entity has implicit communication so in the implicit communication case we will have a data write access but in the explicit communication we have a data send points so this is also implicit call will be optimized to a macro for a sender the same case it doesn't matter how the runnable entity is triggered so any event can be used to activate the runnable entity but one thing you can keep in your mind the data item must not be queued in the implicit communication now receiving a data so how, now till now we have seen about it how we can send a data in a sender receiver communication so the explicit implicit there how we can use data send point or data write access now we are going to discuss about receiving a data if your software components requires a sender receiver interface then you must define at least one runnable entity that receives data over the interface so data can be received in the following ways meaning you can use implicit data read access explicit data read access activation of runnable entity or you can use wake up of wait point these are the four options will be used to read the data in the case of sender receiver interface first we can start with implicit data read access so in the implicit data read access you can use data read access this is a tag you should use for reading the data by using implicit meaning runnable is activated by some rt event example you can consider timing event and makes an rt api call to read a data so when you want to deal with data read access then it will be done via implicit data read access so here you have to mention about the port prototype reference but here we will use the data read access. i will show you whatever the api will be generated by rt in the case of implicit data read access but this tag you can keep in your mind data read access the same way for explicit data read access here we will use a data receive point by arguments meaning whenever you want to call a function you will call an rt api you will pass the argument and the argument data will be filled that you will get the data so the receiver here uses a non-blocking api to hold for the data so runnable entity is activated by an event and makes an rt api call to read or receive the data direct read so if you want to directly read it then you have to use a data receive point by values so in that case you will get us a return value so directly you can read it but if you are choosing explicit data read access you have to use via arguments so here reading a data via generated api return value rather than via arguments so you will get it everything via return value that is the difference between direct read and explicit read activation of runnable entity so in the activation of runnable entity you have to map with the events since it is a R port here i have chosen as a data received event so then via data received event this runnable entity will get triggered and this also makes a non-blocking rt api call to read or receive data so very important point you have to consider when you are going to choose activation of runnable entity meaning no wait point should be specified since the combination of activated runnable entity and blocking api is forbidden by autosar so you can check the autosar version according to that you can decide how you can you are going to activate activation of the runnable entity wake up of wait points so if you need to receive data that means with receive mode of wake up of wait point then you have to configure a runnable entity must define a wait point at configuration time basically most of the project doesn't support or they will not prefer the wake up of wait points but it depends on the application and requirement so if your requirement says if you want to use a wake up of wait points you can configure but more we have already discussed more detail about wake up of wait points you can follow my complete autosar playlist and any runnable entity that defines one or more wait points automatically it becomes a category 2 runnable entity so that is also we have to keep in our mind when you are going to choose wake up of wait points so these are the four options you have when you are going to receive the data so now we can discuss how the sender receiver communications will happen in the case of explicit when you are going to choose the non queued communication so for an example here so application software component we have a p port i have just mapped with the right timing event which will run in every 100 millisecond we have a runnable entity so this runnable entity will get triggered every 100 millisecond so here we are choosing an explicit communication but that is as a non queued because in explicit we have a queued and non queued here i have chosen data send points 
SR communications is again non queued when you are going to make a sender receiver interface you know that the software implementation policy can be omitted so if you will do in such a way then rt will generate api right rt underscore right underscore then this is actually general port name and yy is then a viewer vdp name this is the way rt will generate a api and rd underscore re underscore sender underscore function is your function name which will be generated via your runnable entity so every 100 millisecond this function will get called then we will write a data this is final summary of sender receiver communication so here if you will note these points then you will never forget about sender receiver communication points for an example when you want to make a implicit communication if you want to read then you have to choose the data read access then rt will generate the api called rt underscore i read for write data write access rt will generate rt underscore i write explicit non queued read data receive point by argument you have to choose then this will make a api called rt underscore read see if you will see here explicit in non queued communication we have a two way you can read it one is direct read that is generally called as a data receive point by value another one is data receive point by argument but based on your requirement you can choose it but for write data send point will be used but if they are choosing implicit they will use the data write access so in explicit even though it is queued always for write data send point will be chosen but for read data receive point by argument will be selected so this is the way the complete sender receiver communication summary will be used now you can imagine a case why you need to you need a queued communication when the queued communication will be selected example in the case of explicit when you have to choose you can consider an example autosor follows multiple sender to one receiver having a standard connection between the components could cause a race condition imagine we have a sender 1 and sender 2 they both send to the receiving component they are running every 50 millisecond if sender 1 sends its message at time 37 millisecond sender 1 is sending in 37 millisecond and sender 2 doesn't send until 43 millisecond then the receiver will only read the message from the sender 2 because it was the most recent so when you set up a queued interface between the two sender and the receiver you are able to keep your data in order and process of all of your order when your receiving component is ready that is the reason we need explicit queued communication hope you got a clear idea about how the sender receiver communication works thanks for watching this video if you like it please share it with your friends if you want to stay with us to understand more concepts in AutoSAR, then please subscribe our channel. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.